This is the Voxelab Polaris, a resin 3D printer that you can buy for $111. But the real question is, should you? Let's find out. I bought the Voxelab Polaris on Amazon for $111 after being tipped off to a sale by fellow YouTuber Uncle Jesse. Yeah, that price is real. I had a really good experience with the Lotmax CH10, another budget 3D printer which has been discontinued, and I was curious to see if the Voxelab Polaris could be a natural successor. The build volume of the Polaris is a little bit on the small side for a resin 3D printer, but a 2K masking LCD coupled with a 50 micron Z resolution and a 47 micron X and Y resolution means this 3D printer is capable of making very finely detailed parts. It doesn't have a mono LCD, it's just RGB, so the print speed is going to be between 8 to 10 seconds per layer. This all translates into a machine that's capable of making highly detailed small miniatures at a slower print speed than printers like the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro. I went ahead and took apart the Polaris, and the wiring job on the inside is professional, the board and terminals are all clean, and it's a very well-built sturdy machine. It's got a heavy steel chassis, and it feels rock solid. The UV LED light source is located at the bottom of the machine and shines upwards through the masking LCD to cure each layer. Leveling the build platform on the Polaris is so easy it almost feels like cheating. There's only two bolts, just like the Elegoo Mars series of printers, and all you have to do is loosen those two bolts and then hit home. This allows the build platform to sit flush on a piece of paper that rests between the masking LCD and the platform. Once the platform has come to rest, just tighten those two bolts back up and check to make sure that the paper isn't too tight or too loose. And that's it! As far as manual leveling processes go, I think this might be the easiest. Now that the build platform has been calibrated, we can go ahead and install the resin vat and fill it with resin. There are two slots on either side of the vat that let it slide into place, and then it gets locked down with the two thumb screws on the sides. This is pretty easy, there's really no wrong way to do it. And once that's been locked down, we want to add resin until we get to that max fill line. For this video, I'm using Longer's standard photopolymer resin, and you can find a link in the description if you like this resin and want to try it out yourself. The USB thumb drive that comes with the Polaris includes a test print. This model is a little interesting in that it's actually an STL file and not a pre-sliced file for the printer, so you can't just plug it in and hit go to test the printer, you actually have to download and install the software. I'm using Chi2Box Basic 1.9, and this version of the software actually has a printing profile already built in for the Polaris. So you can see here we have kind of basic settings already set up, ready to go, including the resolution of the masking LCD, the size of the build platform, and all of our various layer exposure times. So this is the standard exposure time, the bottom exposure time, and our lift or retract speeds. I think it's great that the software has this profile already built in. It makes slicing your first part a whole lot easier when you don't have to worry about inputting the wrong settings. You can just use the basic profile and go. I sliced the file in Chi2 box and didn't add any support material or do any post processing. I just used the standard settings, sliced, exported, and hit go. The Voxelab Polaris has a 3.5 inch LCD, which it uses as a primary interface, and you can actually see the status of the part as it's printing. The primary display will show you what cross-section is printing so you can get a feel for what's happening on the printer as it's going. Once the part printed, when I took it off the build platform I noticed it looked solid, it didn't actually look hollow, but that was just the surface tension of the resin. After I had washed and cured it, you can see here the Voronoi pattern looks really good. This is a very fine mesh, I actually measured these beams with calipers and they're between 35 and 45 microns thick, so they're really really thin definitely an ambitious demo model, and I have to say it worked pretty well. I've wanted to print the Mad Cat Mark II by Matt Mason on my mini factory for a long time, and so I decided that would be my second print. I didn't generate any supports manually here, I just used the automatic support generation function and sliced the model. The reliability of models sliced with Chi2 box is something that always really appeals to me, and as you can see it printed without any failures or any issues at all. The model actually looked really good, and after removing the support material and washing it, a lot of that fine detail shone through. Considering the 47 micron XY resolution, the model looks really sharp, and a lot of that fine detail from the initial model shows in the printed version. And you can see here we have all sorts of little nooks and crannies and paneling that I wasn't sure if they would resolve at the scale, but I was pleasantly surprised to find out they did. 
The Battletech model looked good, but I wanted to try and print something a little bit smaller, so I made this 32mm miniature from Loot Studios of a crossbowman, and he's got a shield with some little arrows in it, and I was just curious to see how far I could push this printer, and again, I was really impressed. This model may not look very impressive to people who are used to painting injection molded miniatures, but it's really worth noting this was made on a $111 3D printer, which is really kind of astounding. Even when I pushed the scale up a little bit and made a 75mm miniature, I was still really impressed. And of course, it wouldn't be a resin 3D printing video if I didn't throw in a quick plug for resin lapse. Resin lapse is the quickest and easiest way to make buttery smooth time lapses using your resin 3D printer and a Canon camera. Okay, so let's take a look at this model, and again, I wasn't entirely sure what to expect from a 75mm miniature. I knew it would come out okay, but I was really surprised with the level of detail here. I mean, you can look at the keys that are on his necklace and the lamp that's on his belt. I mean, the detail is really pretty impressive. I probably could have spent a little bit more time on the cleanup and it would have gotten rid of some of these little nicks and pockmarks, but generally speaking, it's a good looking model. It's probably worth taking a minute and pointing out some of the comparisons that I've seen made between the Voxelab Polaris and the Elegoon Mars too. They share a lot of similarities in design. They both have the same bent sheet metal enclosure, as well as that red anodized aluminum top. They're pretty similar, and it's hard not to acknowledge the fact that there's definitely some inspiration going one way or the other. The two-bolt system on the Polaris is also very similar to the one used on the Elegoo Mars 3D printers, and you can see this when you look at their build platforms. Something else I thought was kind of interesting was the build platform on the Polaris is actually larger than the Mars 2, even though the build volume is smaller. I thought that was pretty interesting, so I fired up an exposure test just to get a feel for the size of the masking LCD, and held up the build platform to it to get a better feel for the overall size of the build volume, and I noticed it is a good bit smaller than the plate. So to test this out, I decided to print out the Rust Monster by Loot Studios. I picked this model because it fills up almost the entire build volume of the Polaris, so as you can see it goes edge to edge pretty much across the build platform. And kind of like I was expecting, when I removed the build platform, the model only printed in the center. So I think the build platform in the Polaris and the larger printer, the Proxima, I think it actually uses the same components, meaning the only thing that really changes is the masking LCD. It's kind of cool that the Polaris has so many interchangeable parts, because with the Polaris you can make parts like this that fit pretty much in the palm of your hand, and it's still a relatively inexpensive machine. Overall, for a budget 3D printer, for a beginner, or for somebody looking to produce a lot of parts, I think the Polaris is a really great machine. The native integration with Chi2Box makes it easy to use, and the hardware feels substantial. If you want to learn a little bit more about the Polaris, you can find a link in the description of this video to go to the Polaris site, or you can buy one directly on Amazon. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. As always, thanks for watching, and have fun printing.